So once you have successfully added and installed uh, SignalR into your web project, you simply need to go to Solution Explorer and uh, go to your uh, project and add some hubs into it. Now, let me add a new folder that I call the hubs central. What will hub central contain? It will contain all the hubs, all the notification types that Vivesh our clients could subscribe to. So I say my hub one. Um, there you go. So my hub one will derive from a hub. What is this hub? This hub comes from signal R. So there you go. The beauty of signal R hubs is that 99% of the times, you will not need to provide any implementation details to this class. So this hub in itself is complete. You had it right. This hub in itself is complete. You do not need to write any more code to it. You just need to derive it. So my hub two, and in the very same way, I derive it from hub by using signal hubs. Save everything. Great. So my hubs are in place. So I'll need someone to send notification to these hubs. So we come back to our admin.csps.cs. So just as a refresher, I show you the source that admin.csps has two buttons, client one and client two. Client one will inform all the client one hubs, basically hub one users, and the client two will basically inform all the hub two users. Once in client one, I get the context to my hub. My hub one context. How do I get the context? I say global host. And is there any global host? Yes, it is in Signaler. I say using Signaler. Dot connection manager. Dot. Now there's this get connection context, which if you read, returns the signal are I persistent connection context. We are not using persistent connections in this example, but instead, instead we are using hubs. So we'll use get hub context. What type of hub context? Uh, my hub one. Yes, we have a base template dot hub central. We'll use that. There you go. So you have the my hub one context now. Once you have the hub context, you can get all the clients that are connected to this hub. You can just click on dot and save the clients. Now, once I've got all the clients, I could invoke any JavaScript method that's written on that page. Now, that is the beauty of SignalR. From server side, you can invoke the JavaScript without using any register client script blocks and whatnot. So you just say, um, Tell my users. What do you tell your users? Uh, hey, dude, you are looking at oh, like really fresh. So your uh, user will be very politely informed that, hey dude, you're looking at an old, like really old version, so refresh. Now, what is this tell my users? This is nothing but a JavaScript function on the client. So, uh, whichever page wants to be notified of any changes that happen in Hub1 needs to subscribe to Hub1. So we go to client1. We go to the head section and we will need to include some JavaScript, the jQuery and SignalR. So, there you go. And I will also include one genie script. Why do I call it genie script? Because it's really a genie script. It's like a ghost that appears out of nowhere. Let's see. 
script. Now, there is no script on the source that I've mentioned, and Visual Studio is already complaining about it that this path was not found. But don't worry, because we are using SignalR hubs, this special URL will automatically be resolved and some script will be output at the page. We'll see that later. Now we write the actual code. Now we write the actual code that we'll use to subscribe to the hub. So what do we do? We say, uh, equal to. Now you're in JavaScript, so obviously the method to get the hub context is different. So what do you do? Do this. Now this will get you the context for my hub one. How do you know my hub one? Because it will try and attempt to find any class that has name called my hub one. Now this is has a capital M and this is using camel casing for a small M. This is what you need to follow as per signal our rules. So once you write this, you get the hub context. What do you do with hub one? Now, I go back. I had this tell my users. Now, I'll just copy this phrase, use it here. So I'm essentially telling my page whenever someone says you to, I mean, tells you to tell your users, what do you do? You invoke a function. That takes a value. And what does it do with the value? It simply alerts the user with whatever value it has got. Nice and simple. And now I go on and start the hub. That's it. So to integrate SignalR into our project, what I did was I went to admin, I said get the hub context and tell my users. I went to client, I got the hub context, I defined what tell my users actually does, it alerts, and I just said start. That's it. SignalR is integrated. Let's try and build the project. Build succeeded, it says at the bottom left. Great. Run it. So there you go. You've got this and you've got the admin page. I'll just refresh it once. There you go. So uh, we've got uh, a client one operation here that on which we have written the code to refresh the hub. And we've got a page called client one already opened here. And client one it says, yes, you are. So we click on this button and whoa. Now it tells me that, hey dude, you're looking at an old, like really old version, so refresh the page. Now how easy was that? Quite easy. So when I click this, again, just to get back to the source, when I click that button, it simply gets uh, the hub context, it tells all the clients, and it basically invokes a JavaScript function called tell my users. Now, if I do not define this tell my users here, it will not work, simple as that. So what we can do is, if we have another hub, say hub two, and uh, we wish to notify another type of client, so what do I do?
So what do I do? I say myhub2.context uh, and I get all the clients who implement this JavaScript function called say and I just tell them yay yay I have changed and you have not. So I go to client 2 now. Uh, I insert jQuery, jQuery signaler, and of course our ghost script. And I write the script now. Configures the hub. Now, I named the client function say. Uh, now to start the hub, I just need to write dollar dot connection dot hub dot start. That's it. Done. I build. I restart. I reload the admin page so that the button two functionality comes to us. There's line two. It says I'm client two. Yeah. Client one operation. Client one tells you, hey, it's old. Go back. Perform client two operation. Client two tells you, hey, I've changed and you've not. Now, essentially, we have what we have achieved here is that we are now uh, sending information to only the clients that are interested in the information. It's not that the information is being sent to every page and then the page decides whether or not it wants to do anything with that information. Now, this is important to save bandwidth and of course to save redundancy. I mean, to save on redundancy or should I say cut redundancy uh, in sending the information. So I just hope this uh, session was of some use to you and uh, this base template has been provided as a link in the description of this video so you can download it. Uh, happy coding!